Arguably, Fort Scott's got one of the best running backs in this conference, Devin Taylor, and you guys shut him down tonight. How'd you do it? Uh, well, our coaches, we got great coaches. I thank God for our coaches. He gave us great coaches. Um, we had a, put together a great defensive plan, and our D-line did a great job, and our linebackers did a great job. So, It seemed like Taylor liked to try and burst out on the outside around the tackle and try and beat you guys with speed. You guys yeah. got the speed to match him though a little bit on those defensive ends. Though, right? Yes, sir. In practice, we weren't we weren't really expecting him to do a lot of perimeter runs, but they ended up trying to work it. I guess tire us out, but our coaches did a great job conditioning us, and we came through. You guys uh, also chase around that quarterback down the sideline. He likes to kind of roll out and break his pocket up. Uh, yes, you know, Joe chased him down a couple yeah, times over right. there. When when you see a quarterback get out of the pocket, is that just like go for a tail shot kind of thing? Got to. I mean, we try to keep him contained in, but sometimes as defensive ends, we over pursue and forget to come back. So, I mean, we did a great job redirecting and doing our best to catch him down. And yeah, Joe's a very, very fast guy, so he was able to catch him. Well, they kind of get it to 14 to 6, and there's a little bit of life there. How do you guys kind of uh, keep a strong mentality and then just go ahead and kind of finish them off? We had to, our, during halftime, our coach really got in our head and told us to stay focused. We weren't playing true Blue Dragon football, so we had to get our act together and come out and dominate like we're supposed to. And offense did a great job stepping up second half. And, you know, there was a, a series there where Joe gets a couple sacks in a row, then Vance Johnson kind of comes up with that pump block out of nowhere. Right, right, that was big time. Yeah, uh, how big was that swing play? Uh, big momentum, big momentum change. We, we work on special teams every day, day in and day out, grinding, and it came through for us. Uh, um, you really got in there and blocked the punt. Turned the game around for us, really. All right, and last thing I'll ask you is, in the first half, they averaged 1.3 yards per play. Yes, sir. When you hear that as a defensive player, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's, that's special. I mean, it's good to see that hard work pays off. I mean, we, we, we're going to celebrate this weekend, but we got to get back to work on Monday, get back grinding. we got Butler next week, yep. which will be a big conference game for us. So, tell me about that first touchdown catch. You kind of slip up the sideline there. It was a pretty nifty play. How did you kind of get around those two defenders on the sideline? Uh, I, thought, I thought I was out at first. And then yeah. I, had, I, had broke. And then I looked at the referee and they didn't blow the whistle, so I just took off. And, you know, let's go ahead and talk about touchdown catch number two there, too. It looked like you kind of just out muscled the guy, right? Yeah, um, the play wasn't designed for me, but. The quarterback seen an adjustment on the uh, defensive end. He was just sitting on the plate. And so he threw it to me. You, uh, you seem to have a pretty nice chemistry with Kylan tonight, uh, Kaylin. Um, have you kind of developed that over the first couple games with him? Yes, sir. And over the summer. You know, Fort Scott's got a little bit of uh, a firepower, but your guys' defensive line just crushed them tonight. Uh, is your defensive line just that good that you can't run the ball against them? Yeah, the majority of them. We got some strong guys with them, but it's more room for improvement. Uh, last week you hold Sterling a negative five yards in the first half. This week, uh, Fort Scott has, I think, 49 yards first half offense. What is it about this team just coming out on defense and just shutting teams out like that? Um, I think the guys are playing hard, number one, which is, you know, that's always a great thing to, you know, to play relentless on D and, and uh, play physical. And, um, you know, we needed it, obviously, the ninth. You know, we were a little slow getting going on O, and so it was good that defense was flying around and get some three and outs, getting the ball back for us. Obviously, we've talked about Devin Taylor. He's dynamic, and it looked like they tried to 
pull him out toward the tackles and get him in some space on his runs. But you know, when you got Henderson and Spite, you got a couple guys that can chase him down, right? Yeah, and our, our thought our linebackers did a really nice job too in safeties, setting the edge. You know, when it was their responsibility. Um, yeah, that's the thing that makes it tough with him is you know he can start one inside and then bounce it, and you know that's what he hurt us with last year. So thought the guys did you know did a pretty good job of playing pretty sound, you know, and being where they're supposed to be. Yeah. You get a nice special teams play from Vance Johnson. How about a kid that you're not going to hear his name a lot, but he comes up big for you in a big moment in a close game? On the pump block? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that and uh, that was, you know, obviously a great play. And then Trey Griffin's play on the punt where he, right. you know, knocked the ball out and got us the ball back. Uh, I thought was huge. And... You know, two things I emphasized to the guys after the game were, you know, that we, we preach the importance of special teams. I think that gave us a spark a couple of times tonight. And, uh, you know, we work hard at conditioning, and I think we, you know, I think we were in better shape than they were tonight. And I think, you know, you get into the third and fourth quarter, you start seeing that. Gary Cross kind of gets his name known a little bit tonight. Is he going to be a guy that you think can compliment Daquan? Oh, yeah. Definitely, you know he's uh, he's very good. In fact, in camp, you know he was probably the the um, maybe the brightest star in that group of of uh, good receivers. You know he he really made some good plays and and, uh, and was a threat. So it's nice to see him get going tonight and see him and KB hook up. You know, Port Scott came into this game kind of known for their defensive line, but I think you guys have six or seven sacks of your own tonight. This is kind of uh, the spark to let people know you got your Joe Henderson, your Lee Spites, those kind of guys, Terrence Summers in there too. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a good group of D linemen. You know, there's a, you know we got I think we played probably ten guys tonight, yeah. you know, and, and uh, eight of them, eight or nine of them played a lot, so. The depth, I think, helps, you know, to keep those guys fresh. But uh, I do think, you know, our guys are continuing to get better, and I think we've got some really good players up there. It's kind of always been a staple for us. Yeah. And just with the offense, obviously, Kalen did not look good at all in the first half, but he comes back in the second half and really looks actually pretty sharp. So does, was there anything he did different, or was it just a change in scenery? In yeah, I think just, you know, just buckling down, maybe sharpening the focus a little bit. Um, you know, I think everybody tightened their belt a little bit at halftime. Yeah. You know, we, we, none of us were real happy with. We, we talked about it. You know, we were up 14 nothing, and it felt like we were down 14 nothing basically. You know, we just felt like we had we had played really poorly, and and uh, anyway, we uh, you know, we did get it going a little bit more in the second half. Okay, we'll do it. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah.